Hello, everybody, and welcome to Sci Oh, wait, sorry. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to SciTech. Um, we get to compete in the Mad Science Olympics today. So while we're waiting for everyone to join, if you wanted to type in chat what your favorite Olympic event is, either in winter or in, in, winter or in summer Olympics, um, we can type that in chat uh, to get started. Um, but uh, before we begin, I just wanted to say um, that this program is being recorded. So for your privacy, we're going to keep videos and microphones off throughout the program. And uh, other than that, we don't have any share screens or anything like that. So we don't have to go through the Zoom tutorial or anything, but uh, we um, I'm, I'm really excited to introduce our speakers today, um, the, the educators from the mad science of the triangle. So thank you so much for speaking with us today and I'll let you take it from here. Hey everybody, oh, it's so good to be here with SciTech. Uh, I'm a mad scientist, I'm with mad science of the triangle. My name is the Joe Fesser, so uh, hello everybody. And I'm really excited to be here because now it's mad science Olympics time. Boom! We love the Olympics at Mad Science. Uh, it is a great event that's held every, well, two years or four years, however you want to think about it, whatever. It's held every uh, so often. And we love celebrating the whole spirit of competition and friendly get togetherness that is the Olympics. Now, uh, we also have some other mad scientists out there that I need to introduce. To. There's Dr. Eminem. Now, Dr. Eminem is holding it down for us. He's making sure that all of our uh, cameras and stuff work really well. Yes, there he is. Uh, he will also be asking those questions that might pop up, right? Uh, now, we're being brought to you through the power of Zoom, 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 Zoom. Uh, now, you guys are probably really, really familiar with how Zoom works right now. Uh, but if you have any questions or you have any comments or anything like that, Make sure you utilize that chat feature, right? Chitty tack, chitty tack, 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 tack. And send Dr. Eminem all your cool chats. And if you have any cool questions or whatnot, you can make sure that they get to me. Now, we also have a close-up cam, right? Every good Olympics coverage has the close-up cam, right? Where they can see things spotlighted up close, all right? So here it is. I love close. I'm in your face. Ah, all right, guys. So now that, enough of that. But we also get to see some things that I'm doing uh, so you can see the competition up close just like we should all right now mad science olympics now you guys may have seen mad science before right we go to all around the schools and things like that sometimes we go to libraries we do after school programs and in school field trips we even do birthday parties right so you may have seen mad science before but if you're seeing mad science for the first time know that we always have uh, three golden rules number one golden rule be safe whatever you're doing whenever you're doing your mad science make safe decisions. If you're trying to recreate anything that we do right here, make sure you have some adult supervision around and uh, be safe. Now, most of the stuff that we're doing here today, most of our events, you can see how to do it if you go to the Mad Science website, right? We give instructions and uh, a whole bunches of things for you to do if you go there uh, to help recreate this. But if you do that, make sure you're making safe decisions and doing smart, safe science, all right? Number two is respect. Well, the Olympic Games are all about respect and friendly competitions, fair and honest between competing nations. So there's no problem with that. And the third rule is to have fun. And my close-up cam, did my close-up cam uh, go out, Mr. Uh, yes, Dr. yes it did. Yes, it did. I'm gonna check connections. And ah, uh, there it is. Uh, I'll see if we can get that back up just for a second, right? Because we're gonna kind of need that for a little bit. Otherwise, I'll just move this camera up close and we can see I have to move. I'll play cameraman and mad scientist. I love it. Ah, uh, nice. Uh, so we are uh, going to do our mad science Olympia today. Right now, the first mad science, Olymp this mad science Olympiad, every mad si every Olympiad starts off with the lighting of the Olympic torch. Yes, we have our own version right here. You can see it's a Florence blast and it's designated as our Olympic torch. Now I will provide fuel. Now you guys, you know when a fire, when you need a fire, you need a couple of things, right? You need fuel, you need oxygen, and you need something to get the ignition point, right? To raise the temperature enough to the ignition point. Well, we happen to have all three right here, right? I got... I have got my uh, fuel right here, you can see. 
Peru for my mad science Olympic torch. I have an ignition point that I can use right here. Now, this is the lighter. Guys, if you ever see a lighter at home, just pass it by, right? Or get an, tell an adult, and they'll let you know what, exactly what to do, right? Ugh. All right. So now, here is my mad science torch. And this is be the most auspicious lighting of the mad science Olympic torch. Now, I'm going to get my lighter working. And we know that when we light the Olympic torch, it stays lit throughout the games as a symbol of unity and hope, right? So quite please, as we light the Olympic torch. Yeah, uh-oh, uh uh-oh, uh -oh, it went out. Oh no, uh, ee, uh, okay, hold, hold on. Uh, uh, you know what, we didn't have enough fuel. So I'm gonna get some more fuel. I only had like one strip of paper in there, really. <laughs> that probably wasn't gonna do it. Uh, so I'm gonna get uh, multiple strips of paper this time and put them right there in my torch. There we go. Now, now it will stay lit throughout the Olympic Games. Da -ba -da -ba 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 ah, it's gone again. Ah, you know what? It's never going to stay lit because we're using a special kind of paper. That's right. Um, now, it looks like a pretty cool trick for the burnout and go bright and flash away like that. But this isn't a magic show or anything like that. This is science. That's why I tell you just exactly how everything's done, right? This special paper that we're using, it's called nitrocellulose. Now, cellulose just means it's the same stuff that trees are made out of, like every ordinary kind of paper, right? But the nitro part means it's treated with a special chemical so that when it burns, it almost completely goes away, right? It's also called flash paper, and lots of uh, magicians will use it to kind of distract you. But since that event has uh, the lighting of the Olympic torch has gone a little awry, we will move on to balloons. That's right. We got to celebrate with balloons. Hold on a second, guys. All right. And do, 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 do. While you're setting that up, we have a uh, question. Yes, yes. yes. already, yes. How, how, the question is, how do you not get burnt when you use glass paper when, when you set it on fire? Oh, well, because it burns so quickly, right? Uh, it stands there. It burns like paper would, right? But you see it goes out really, really fast. It goes out so fast, it really doesn't have a chance to burn me. Now, guys, I'm a mad scientist. Don't go playing with fire, right, thinking you won't get burned because fire can definitely burn you, right? Oh, mad science, I'm used to nitrocellulose and what we do here, right? I give you the secret of the trick, but don't try these tricks at home, right? Not without a parent or, or somebody else around. All right. Now, I'm going to try and sign my close-up cam back in to Dr. Eminem. Please be on the lookout for that. Sorry. I am keeping my eyes peeled. Oh. Are we back in? Oh, yep. I think we are. Just need to turn the video on. Oh, video on. Oh, and sound but not off. Connect, but not connect to the audio. Yeah. Uh. Katie, would it be possible to make the Mad Science Lab a co-host so they can turn on their video? Yeah, I says the host has stopped it. Right. Uh, but we're going to go over on to the next part. Let's see if we'll get that cleared up. It'll be easy. All right. Uh, okay, but it'll be easy once we get it signed up. We got to uh, the ceremony of the opening games, right? You, uh, there's something called the Parade of Nations, where you all get your uh, favorite nations, and they walk around sporting their flags, right? They walk around sporting their flags. Now, just for this Mad Science Olympiad, we went and got a, our own flag made, right? I don't know if you can see this. We spent a lot of money to get this design. Uh, up there, right? Is it uh, everything look okay with it? Hey, Dr. M, &M does it look pretty good? Uh, I I don't know who, who I forget who was our graphic designer, but um, I huh? think they might have made a uh, uh quite an error on it. Oh oh no! Okay, so what do you think is wrong with it? Uh, it looks backwards to me. Back? Oh my gosh! It is backwards. 
Oh, we spent so much money on making this thing and designing it. Oh, we don't have time enough to get it redone. I, I got to figure out some way to fix this. Uh, maybe if we get into close-up cam real quick and see if I can figure out a way to fix this. Ah, you know, I got it. I know a good way to fix it, right? No, 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 no. We can use the power of science. Bam, bam, bam. Now, I don't know about you guys, but the power of science can fix a lot of cool things. And I happen to have something right here that'll help us fix it. You guys can see my, my flag right there. Now, uh, since I can't fix the flag real fast, maybe I can fix the light. What? That's right. We know that images are carried through the camera and to your eyes. It's all light traveling back and forth. So if I can't mess with the actual image itself, maybe I can mess with the light in a way. And I can use this. Bum, bum, bum. Are you still looking at my flag right there? Did it all of a sudden change? Dr. Eminem, did I fix it? Look at that. It is brand new. It is excellent. Now it's going the right way saying mad science. So uh, how did that work? Well, it's the, it's the water in my great big tube right here, right? It's a lot of water. When light travels from the air into water, right, it bends a little bit. It refracts, right? And then when it travels back out of the water again, it bends again. So that makes that uh, when the light goes and hits my flag and bounces through all of this to get to the camera, it's bent uh, twice and turned the image oof, right side uh, going, right? Nice. No longer backward. We are saved through the power of science. I love it. Now, moving on to our, oh, our first event and also celebration, right? When uh, we all know that balloons make any event better, right? And we decided for our mad science Olympiad, we would actually inflate our balloons, but turn it into a competition. So if you look in the mad science close-up camera right now, you will see our two competitors. Yes, they're ready to compete and blow up their balloons. We have one red balloon and one blue balloon. Now for them to blow up their balloons, you're saying, hey, uh, Joe Fesser, uh, those are just Erlenmeyer flasks. They're never going to be able to blow up these balloons. But we can do it through the power of science. Yes. First, we need to fill up our competitors with a little bit of acid. Woo. Yes. What we call vinegar or acetic acid. So I'm going to put some acetic acid in each one of my competitors. A good squirt. Probably about 50 milliliters of good old-fashioned vinegar. Now, you guys have probably eaten or tasted vinegar before, and you know that it's kind of sour. Well, that's that acid in there, right? There are lots of different kinds of acids. Some are very strong, some aren't. And we know in uh, mad science, when an acid and a base come together, good things can happen, or at least interesting things, right? So I need a base to work with here. So I'm going to use baking soda. Boom, boom, boom. Now you might have vinegar and baking soda right in your very own kitchen. Baking soda is used in cooking a lot of times to provide bubbles, right? Now I'm going to put some baking soda into each one of my competitors' little hats here, right? Uh, this red one right here, I'm going to need a funnel to do that, so I'm going to put it on a funnel just like that. And now I'm going to put one scoop. Oh, that's not enough. That's not as much fun. This is mad science after all. Let's do two scoops. Wait a minute. This is still mad science. Two is not enough. Let's go three. Three is a good, good, good sign right there. Oh, that's a lot of good base in there. Now, I'm going to put it on my competitor's head. It's going to wear it like a hat just off to the side, um, like a French ballet or something like that. Oh, wee wee, right? Now, I'm going to do the other one right now with a little bit of funnel help. Whoosh. And I'm going to put one, two, three scoops in there, too. You know what? He's going to try and get an advantage. He's going for four scoops. What? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. What will the competition uh, committee think? But he's going for it. Why not? All right. Now, they're going to have a race to see who can inflate their balloon the fastest, right? Some of you can go ahead and lay odds right now. Is it going to be the red balloon 
with its three scoops of baking soda and 50 milliliters of vinegar? Or will it be the Boo Boo with its four scoops? All right, on your mark, get set, go! Go, go, go! Oh, there it goes! Oh no, blue is going! Blue is going! Oh my goodness! They're going so fast! I can barely keep it in the camera view. Wow! Look at those guys go! Oh, and I think balloon, blue balloon, wait a minute! Red balloon is making a surge here at the end! Who's gonna get bigger? Oh, which balloon is bigger? I don't know. Which balloon got there faster? I think the blue balloon did. That might be more my technique than anything else, right? Now, what we did see there, guys, was an acid-base reaction, right? We dumped that base into the acid, and so all the ions started collaborating and getting together. They released some carbon dioxide gas, which filled up our balloons, and it made some water. So all that vinegar and baking soda down there, it actually made some extra water in there. Uh, so that's pretty cool. All those molecules recombine, and we used it to inflate our balloons. Bum ba da bum. Celebration time. Oh, cool. Now let's move on to another event, the marathon. Now I don't know if you've ever seen the Olympics. That running is a great big part of the uh, the Olympics, right? They run short distances like 100 meters. Uh, they run 400 meters, 1600 meters. They run a lot, uh, and then they run the marathon. Now the marathon is a long, long way. Uh, so it takes some time for it to go, but they run real fast and try to do it. Now for us, we need to do something a little different because uh, we can't run right here in Mad Science Labs. It's not safe to run in the lab, right? So we got two different competitors and I'll show them to you in the close-up pam. right? These are our competitors right there. I have the blue dot and the red dot and they're going to race from their positions right there on the starting line all the way up to, to the top of their perspective tracks. Now, I have to set this up to make it a completely fair race, so I need some tape. So I'm going to tape the red to his stick right there. Good. Get folding down a little bit. Good. And I'm going to take the blue to his stick, just like this. Tape on the stick, tape on the competitor. Boom. Right? Just like that. Folding down a little bit. And there they are, ready to go. All they're waiting for is the starting gun, right? To say go. When you can set, go. Oh, wait a minute. All right. Yeah, yeah, you're right, guys. They're just dots. How can we get the dots to climb up those strips? I don't know. Oh, I know what we can do. We can yell at them a lot. Go, go, go. Okay, that doesn't work. All right, that's just not working at all. All right, oh, you know what we can do? We can use the power of water. I've got water. Remember, I got water right in here. We're using a lot of water because it's really, really cool and useful, right? Now, I'm going to put about just enough water in each one of these cups. So that our competitors, the bottom part of their racetrack touches the water, right? Just barely dips in, just like that, right? I'm going to do it on this guy too. Oh, man, too much. No, good. And you now you can see that they're off. Look at Blue Dot go. Oh, wow. He's using the capillary action in the paper towels, right? The, uh, they're made out of plant material, and that plant material likes to soak up water. Plus, there's the adhesion and cohesion properties of water. That's right. Uh, water likes to stick to itself, and it will try and crawl up this entire racetrack, right? And it'll bring along by our competitors. Now, our competitors are making long, long streaks all over the uh, racetrack. And we'll come back and check on those a little bit later. We're going to see who's going to win. Red or blue. Looks like red is really going fast right now, okay? So we're going to see. And that we'll come back to that in just a second. So I'll set those guys up here. All right. In our next event, boom, ba -da boom, we will now go to the high jump, right? So uh, Olympics, the Olympics, they're uh, faster, higher, stronger is their uh, motto, right? And so one of the classic events for any Olympics is the high jump. Now, the high jump is pretty cool. And when you study it scientifically, it makes it even cooler, right? Because you have 
athletes converting energy whoosh, used to propel themselves up, defying gravity, and over a bar, right? Now, that's pretty cool. Now, we can't defy gravity forever. Uh, at least we can't, uh, not here on Earth, uh, not without the power of a rocket ship. But we can temporarily defy gravity if we apply enough energy in the upward direction. Now, how does our body get that energy? Well, we convert chemical energy from food and things like that and into um, uh, kinetic energy or the energy of motion. And our muscles propel us over these, um, over these bars. Now, for us, we have, for our conversion, our energy conversion, we're going to use this device. And I'll bring it just a little bit closer so you guys don't have to move so much. All right? Uh, this device. This, you guys may recognize as a catapult, right? And uh, But it's an awesome device used to convert energy, right? It converts elastic potential energy into kinetic energy, just like our muscles connect, uh, convert chemical energy into kinetic energy, right? This does kind of sort of the same thing, right? Now, the elastic potential energy comes from this wooden bar that you see right here. You need to do. I pull it down. And elastic means it wants to go back to being where it was before, just like that. Now, not everything is elastic. I don't know if you've ever seen, sometimes you'll like try to bend a pencil and it'll snap, right? Not elastic, right? Or like if you have a Superman, well, that's also not elastic because it doesn't bend back, right? On its own. But when you have something that has elastic potential energy, you can deform it or put it out of shape. And then when you release it, it converts that potential energy into kinetic energy. And you can use that. And catapults have been using that for thousands of years, right? Uh, as they hurl rocks and things like that, right? So let's see if we can use this to hurl our competitors over the high jump bar. You see, I've got my high jump bar set pretty, pretty high, okay? And I'm, both are going to both use the same catapult. And first goes the blue competitor. Bum, ba -da -bum. Blue competitor steps up. Will he be able to get over? Five, four, three, two, one. Release. Yes! He clears. Now it's Red's turn. If I use the same amount of force, I should get a trajectory or path that it flies through the air at about the same, right? As if I don't mess up, right? That's what it's all about. The pressure's on. Blue has already cleared the high jump. Can red clear the high jump? Ready? Three, two, one, go! Oh, no, he didn't go! Oh, the pressure got to me! Oh, I couldn't believe it! Can you believe it? Oh, let's try one more time. One more time. Oh, oh gosh. Ah, I gotta go. Blue, let's see if blue can do it. Blue didn't have any trouble before, and blue, yes, he did! Now, red, you gotta make up for it this time, guy. Can you do it? Three, two, one, go. Yes, he did it that time. Oh, so if you're a red fan out there and you're pulling for red, red got over the bar. Nice. Converting that elastic potential energy into kinetic energy, the energy of motion. Oh, awesome. Now, I know what you're thinking. It's getting hot, right? Uh, all this running and jumping that we're doing. But let's take a look at our marathon runners we're up there racetrack. Go to the close-up cam and let's see. If we look at those, wow. Wow, I think blue got all the way to the stick. Blue got all the way to the stick. Red didn't quite get there. Nope, red stopped. Oh, so blue wins the marathon. But this is pretty cool, right? Capillary action, catching those pigments and those dyes and spreading them out just like that. It's pretty awesome, right? Now, our competitors left a lot of themselves on the track tonight, uh, but hopefully they'll be able to pull together and help support their um, fellow athletes in the events to come. Like at the pool. Yes, the pool. Let's go to our Olympic-sized pool. Whoa. I'm going to put it right here, guys. So hopefully you can see it. Can we see it in the close-up cam pretty good? Oh, yes. Now, our Olympic athletes are going to go swimming. That's right. Well, swimming is a part of the Olympics, right? And I don't know if you can see, I have a little line right in there that marks the uh, 
the finish line. You may or may not be able to see it. Uh, it's hard to see sometimes because, well, it got kind of diluted, right? But our guys, our Olympic athletes are going to swim there. Now, our Olympic athletes, you're saying, let's see those guys. Who's going to do the swimming? Bum, bada, bam. Yes, it's toothpicks. What, you were expecting something else? Right? But our toothpicks are going to be able to swim all the way. And we're going to see who can get from this side of the pool to that side of the pool first, right? So I'm going to set my toothpicks up right here. Just like that, I'm going to cross them in like a little triangle shape. And my little red guys over here. All right. They're ready to go. Now, how can we get them to go? We want to try yelling again? Okay, yelling can work. All right, right. Go! 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 Okay, still not working. Yelling doesn't seem to work for anything, right? Uh, especially not in science. So let's try some more good science, right? Let's try the power of detergent yes detergent just like soap right now i'm going oh, this guy is trying to get in this guy's lane over here get back over there sir get back over there stay in your lane always good advice even in life right stay in your lane all right now now those guys are gonna be right there i'm gonna use the power of soap and now how i'm gonna do that right i'm gonna put a little bit of soap on my q-tip and i have two q-tips one for each competitor right and that soap, when I touch it to the water, the reason soap is really cool, right, is that it breaks the surface tension of water and allows water to um, penetrate things. That's how it helps clean stuff. Now, our soap, this soap can help. Uh, the reason our toothpicks are floating as well as they are is because the surface tension is holding them up. But if I break the surface tension behind them, boom, they can start to race. All right, are right, we ready? Three, two, one. Uh, 
Well, yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, I kind of did sort of mess up. Uh, it, in order to build my platform, I kind of covered up the pool, didn't I? Uh, how can my athlete get from the top of the high dive into the pool? Huh. Huh. Well, you know what? We can solve this problem with science. That's right. Because if I remember correct, correctly, uh, Newton's first law of science is all about inertia. Now, inertia is a funny word, right? But all it means is that when things are going, right, they like to keep going. And if they stop, it likes to stay stopped. If you want to change either one of those two things, you have to apply a force to them, right? It's also kind of called the seatbelt rule, right? The seatbelt law of motion. Remember, uh, if you've ever been driving along, and all of a sudden a raccoon jumps out in front of the road and you hit the brakes, boom, and the car stops, but you go, whoa, lurks real forward. Now, I know most of my mad scientists out there probably don't drive that much. Maybe you're sitting in the back seat, but still, when whoever the driver is stops so they don't hit that raccoon, boom, you get lurched forward like that, right? Well, that's inertia, right? You're traveling along, the car stops, but hey, you didn't. So you try to go forward. It's not until you hit that seatbelt mm, that you stop. That's also why it's real important to wear seatbelts, just in case there's any crazy raccoons out there. All right. So uh, I can use that knowledge, right? The, the first ocean to help my athlete get into the pool, right? Off of this diving platform. All I have to do is apply a force to the platform but not to my athlete, right? So if I apply a force to my platform and get it out of the way, well, then my athlete should drop straight down because it has the force of gravity always kind of pulling it down to earth, right? So if I go sideways and apply a force to just the platform and not the guy, then he should make it into the pool. All right, are you ready to see it? I am too. All right, let's see if old Blue can make it into the water by uh, uh, application of Newton's first law of motion. Ready? Three, two, oh, oh. oh, Sorry, guys. That was a little Charlie Brown for you. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Yes, he made it! No way. It worked, right? I, I knocked the platform out of the way, but because I didn't hit my athlete, he dropped straight into the pool. Amazing job, Blue. Way to go. Now, let's see if I can get my, oh, let's get my diving structure back onto the pool. And we'll try the same thing with red, right? It should work. If my technique is right and red is ready to go and jump into the pool, right? It should work one more time. Are you ready? Three. Wait a minute. Got to line him up. Make sure he's just right. All right. Ready? Three, two, one. Go. Oh, no. He missed. He hit the side of the pool. And concussion. And concussion. Oh, no. He hit the side of the pool, right? A little extra energy got into him. So instead of going falling straight down, he popped up a little bit. And instead of flopping down straight into the water like he's opposed to do, right, he hit the side of the pool. Oh, no. He's fine, right? It didn't feel good, but he's fine. But he didn't make it into the pool, so the judges aren't going to like that dive very much at all. Ugh. But you know what? That brings us to the end of our Olympics game. Whether we win or lose, we all had a good time, and we witnessed – some crazy, crazy cool stuff, right? Now, I like the ending a little, or what they call the closing of the Olympic Games, right? Because they have lots of cool stuff there, right? They have another parade, and usually they have like singers and like all sorts of crazy acts going on, right? And they have fireworks. Who doesn't love fireworks? I love fireworks. You love fireworks. In fact, we love fireworks so much. We're going to do fireworks right here inside of Mad Science Labs. Woohoo! All right, they're not going to be, they're going to be the, our indoor fireworks, right? And they're going to be basically the same principles of fireworks, just kind of on an indoor uh, level for us, right? So, first thing I need to do is get an ignition first, right? Fireworks. We need to get a fire. So, I have a little lamp right here. 
and I'm going to uncork him just like that and make sure he's all ready to go. Are you all ready to go? He said yes. Good. All right. Now, I will light the lamp. Ah, uh, yes. Now, I've lit the lamp, so I'm going to go out and turn some of these lights off so you guys can see our indoor fireworks better. All right. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. All right, kitties. Yes. Oh, that's looking pretty good. That's looking pretty good. All right. Now, oh, one, one more light, one more light off. And then we go. Let's see how that is. Right there. Oh, that's looking really good. All right. Now, you can see my flame, right? This is an alcohol lamp, right? And this burning has got some crazy colors in it right now, right? But we're going to see if we can get a little bit crazier, right? Because uh, fireworks are when we set fire to different, different chemicals because they burn. And when they oxidize or burn really quickly, um, sometimes they burn in different colors, which is really awesome science, right? Because we've been able to observe this and that allows us to uh, know a lot of things about chemistry and things like that, right? If we know that certain chemicals burn and they change colors when they burn, right? Then, uh, or the light that they give off is a certain color. Then if we see something far away, like a distant star that's burning, we can tell just by the uh, uh, the light that's coming from it or the electromagnetic radiation is coming from it, right? Just exactly what is burning. So stars can be made out of all sorts of materials and we can tell just by from the quality of the light. Now, I am going to start our, our indoor fireworks by burning copper sulfate. Bum, bum, bum. Now, it, it's a, it, you can see, maybe you guys can see, it's all kind of a blue color, right? Now, how many of you think we're going to get a blue flame when we burn copper sulfate? Uh, let me think. Of, oh, I see a few hands. All right, all right. Here we go. Ready? Three, two, one. Oh, what color did we get? We did not get blue. We got an awesome, awesome green. Let's try that one more time. Oh, yes. A little sprinkle and got a little green in there. Oh, I love it. Oh, hey, you know what that means, though? That means if you ever go to a fireworks show like uh, Bastille Day or uh, Independence Day in Canada or I don't know, what else do they use fireworks? Oh, at the Olympics or something like that. Or even July 4th. Maybe some of you guys have seen uh, fireworks on July 4th, right? So, Joe Fesser, we have... Uh, a couple questions for you real quick. The first question, does copper sulfate smell bad? Actually, no. Uh, even when it burns, I'm not getting a, a really cool smell, all right? So I'm going to smell it right here. No, it doesn't smell much like anything at all. It smells a little bit like a penny, uh, but it doesn't really smell much like anything at all, right? And then your second question is, is that how they did the flu powder in Harry Potter? Whoa, look at you guys. You guys are amazing. Yes, of course. They burn a certain kind of chemical. Now, they want to make you believe in, in Harry Potter world that it's all magic, right? But we know that it's probably science uh, that they use to make it look like magic. Now, here's another chemical that we can burn, right? And see what color this is. This one is lithium sulfate. And let's see what color this is when we burn it. It's a white powder. Ooh, we get a really pretty magenta kind of red. Can you guys see that? Oh, my gosh. Oh, that's so pretty, right? So if you wanted to get a really red flame going on, you would burn this white powder, right? Which is really cool. Now, our last one that we're going to burn and see what is really cool is called... Uh, da, da, da. here it is iron now you guys probably have heard of iron right it's uh used to make steel uh it's pretty common it's pretty awesome that it's in earth though right having so much iron uh in at earth because it's our magnetic field and lots of cool things like that right our core is basically made out of iron so it's pretty awesome and you can see the color is kind of a black i'm not sure what a black flame is going to look like but nothing else is burning the same 
Let's see what our iron does when we put it in the flame. Oh, wow, look at that. Oh, that's pretty awesome right there. Oh, that's some indoor fireworks happening right there. So now we know that the flu powder, right, was probably a mixture of like green stuff, maybe copper sulfate. And to give it a little sparkle, oh, a little iron in there, you just mix those two up and you get an awesome fireworks display. Look at that. Oh, pretty cool. Now, I said that was our last one. And that's our last individual one. But we have another thing that we uh, can do. And it's called the mix. Ooh. So we just took a bunch of these metals and we mixed them up right in here. And we're going to see if we can see what kind of craziness we can get, right? So I'm going to get some, scoop some of these up and see what kind of cra craziness happens when we mix them up. Whoa. The iron still, she's pocket of iron. It just, it just comes a flame, right? All right, let's see what happens. Oh, I see green and sparkles. Oh, that's pretty good. I like that. I like that. Let's try it next time and see what happens we get this done. Oh, those sparkles just kind of dominate. Oh, I like it. I'm going to go back to copper because I love copper. I love that pretty green because fire being green, nobody thinks about fire being green. Like, what? Fire's not green. It is when you burn copper, baby. Boom, right? Drop some knowledge. Uh. Oh, oh, I love, love it. Oh, now I put out my flame. Oh, oh man. I'm going to try and light it one more time. Yep, there we go. Good. Uh, all right, guys. Uh, I think we're about out of time. Is this am I am I speaking correctly there, Sam? Yeah, almost. Uh -huh. Do we have any? Uh, do we have time for questions? If, if anyone have any questions, questions for any of these? Does anybody have any cool questions going on? Yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to type them in chat. I love seeing all of those gorgeous colors in fire. That was very nice to see. Oh, cool! And, and you can still see the sparkles even with the light on. You can't really see the flame, but you can see the sparkles. Mm -hmm. oh, I know, really now it just, cool. it looks like they're like coming out of midair. <laughs> can't see the flame. Let's see if it burns green, if we can see the green flame. We can't see the normal flame. Let's see if we can see Ooh. the green. Has anybody got any questions out there? Uh, I'm not seeing any yet. All right, well guys, it has been so much fun doing our Mad Science Olympic Games, right? We do crazy cool stuff like this for mad science all the time. We make slime, we fly airplanes, we do lots of cool things. And it's all these things that we like to do that are cool. Doing them with you makes them cooler, right? So we're going to continue. I'm going to put the cap on this plane so we don't get any accidental stuff going. All right. And now I've got uh, we are cool for any questions, right? Anything we did today, have, uh, or any questions about science in general. I know it's a big time for science, especially if you're into space, right? Because we're on Mars. We've got a rover on Mars and a helicopter on Mars. Ah, that's incredible. That's the first time a helicopter's been off planet Earth. That's pretty awesome, right? Uh, so if you get a chance, make sure you're looking at the pictures that are coming back from Mars, from the helicopter and the rover that's going there. They're searching for little signs of ancient life, right? They're going to places where they think there might have been water at one time and see if they have like little microscopic. So we're going to hopefully that'll be cool if they can do that uh, and find some of that because we're always on the search for some aliens out there, especially if you're a mad science. Oh, nice. Oh. Yeah, definitely. And speaking of, we did right before this program, we had an, an update on the Mars rovers. So if you missed that program, we have it in our uh, YouTube museum playlist. So we'll paste the uh, link to the, the playlist oh. for our, awesome. oh, see. if you want to watch that. That's amazing. <laughs> all right. And if you can go by the science museums, hey, what better place to learn about all sorts of life science or any sort of science that you want to go to learn about? in the museums, right? That's what they're there for. They're cataloging all of that scientific information just so you can have it whenever you visit. Uh, uh, all right, guys, I think we're about out of time. Uh, yeah. any, any more questions coming in or anything like that?
No, I think uh, everyone said that you answered all of their questions throughout the program. So thank you so much, Professor and Dr. Eminem, for speaking with us today. Um, and we hope that everyone who tuned in had fun. I had a blast. That was amazing. It was a lot of fun seeing all those really cool Olympic games <laughs> and competitions. Wow, um, and we'd like to... Oh, sorry. Yes? No, no, no. Go ahead. Go, go, go. Oh, yes. I was just saying we'd like to thank our uh, supporters, or um, our sponsors, Biogen Foundation and the North Carolina Science Fest who helped support our SciTech programming this week. And as always, thank you to our members of the museum who support us every day and help make events like SciTech happen. Um, we only have one more program left in SciTech for this week, our Guess a Sketch program. So we uh, pasted the link in our Zoom chat as well as YouTube if you wanted to hop over to that Zoom call um, for that. And finally, again, like we were saying, the recording of this program will be available on our museum's YouTube if you would like to rewatch, um, and as well as our previous programming this week. So if you wanted to rewatch anything um, or missed a program, then you can go ahead and rewatch that. Um, and yeah, I want to say thank you again so much. It was a ton of fun. All right. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Bye, Bye side dick. <laughs> we'll see you next time. <laughs>